What is going on today guys, Tomcat here, and today we are back in Spin Tires, taking a look at the Spun in Darkness Camel Trophy Land Rover. Now this thing is properly ridiculous. This thing is probably the ultimate, if not the ultimate, adventure vehicle in Spin Tires, the ultimate exploration vehicle, um, and in the words of Spun himself, if you get this thing stuck, you're, you're doing something wrong, because this thing, I just gotta turn that sound down just a little bit and turn motion blur off, because I remember I reset spin tires, but this thing has all-wheel drive on all the time, 100% of the time. You cannot turn it off. Um, the only option you have is diff lock. Now, there are no customization options for this right now at this point for this edition, but I'm sure he'll update that later on in the future. Now, with this being a Land Rover, it's going to have a few Land Rover-ish um, traits. Now, one of those traits is the fact that it not only goes over everything, but it pretty much goes through everything as well. This thing will go pretty much through everything in its way as long as it's not a say, massive tree or something like that. I mean, it's it's no, um, it's no 8x8, but it does get the job done, for sure. Now, the detail work is incredible, as usual. S same spun in darkness. Um, real quality. Real quality. And I think this is one of those mods where it's something that you know that they couldn't have done as the as the developer. You know that they, that they couldn't have put this in um, just due to certain reasons. But it's one of those things where when you get your hands on a good modding community with people that are really, really driven to make the game the way they want to make it, then you end up with mods like this. You end up with mods that really complement the game. They they don't always look like a modification to it. Now, even though, yes, you could tell right off the bat, yes, it is a modification to the base game, it looks like it could fit in with the quality level of trucks that you already see anyway, sometimes even better with some of these mods. Now, when a modder can pull off something like that, that's when they know they've succeeded. In my opinion, that's when a modder knows that they've succeeded is when they can pull off something like that. It's like, it's like, for example, when, say, say you're going to add more horsepower to a car and you just try to throw everything at it and you just kind of go, like, haphazardly. Um, it's not going to drive well. It's not, it's going to be all over the place. Things just aren't going to work right. Whereas if it's tuned properly and everything is built to a specific standard, it's going to perform like the original yet so much more. So... That's what I consistently see with the Spun and Darkness mods, especially with this particular Land Rover. I drove his original Land Rover, uh, which a lot of you guys actually corrected me on um, in my Ultimate Adventure videos or uh, video series, which I do appreciate your, your all your support on that. Um, the support on that series was awesome. Um, that was a really fun series to make. A really, really, really fun series to make. Alright, so we're back. And also, the other thing too with this, um, with this Land Rover is the gearing. You can pretty much leave it in auto, and it'll crawl just fine. It knows when it needs to go down into first gear, unlike a lot of the automatic gearboxes and spin tires, which really don't know uh, when they need to go down into first gear, because a lot of them will kind of change up and down and up and down up all, all over the place, basically, and they don't really know. They don't have that um, that fine-tuning. Again, The fine we get right back to the fine-tuning that I talked about earlier, where these things have to be tuned properly, and you see where we're going down a hill, picking up some speed, goes right up into fourth, maintains the speed that we need, and then, right here when we get up to this riverbank, goes down into second, and I'm sure that once we get down into the river, if it needs to, it'll kick down into first. We'll see. Probably once we start to climb out the other side. Right there, it kicked down into first, and the thing is, there's not that big of an interruption. I mean, there is a little bit of an interruption in power, but it's nothing dramatic. It's nothing that's going to destroy the experience, it's nothing that's going to ruin the actual um, driving experience of the vehicle. It's just something that's always going to be there with these automatic gearboxes. You're going to tell when they change down, or if you don't want to deal with that, just put it in low and it works fine there too. And even though it doesn't have the most ground clearance in the world, it does pretty well over rocks. Again, it's not the best over rocks because it's not some kind of, you know, it doesn't have monster truck ground clearance, but if we can get it over the, there we go. I mean, you kind of get the axles caught sometimes, but that's going to happen with anything of this size. And the thing is, too, it's very realistic. It's very believable. You're not kind of not kind of wondering if, well, it looks cool, but I don't think it would actually work. There's none of that. This thing, you know it would work. You know it, you know, I mean, this thing, this is a, re, a replica, a rebuild of a, oops, that doesn't really work. Um, but it is a replica of an actual, an actual Land Rover, the actual Camel Trophy Land Rover. So they really captured the essence of that, and now I just realized why I wasn't moving, <laughs> because parking brake was on. Gen generally, the parking brake prevents you from moving. As long as it's doing its job properly, you shouldn't be able to move, and I wasn't, so that means it works. 
Let's actually see if we can climb up that. I mean, I'm not going to worry about the cloaking point. We're not really concerned about unlocking any of the areas of this map. There's no point, really. Um, the thing is, too, if you're... I feel like when you're doing a mod test, it's almost better to kind of leave the cloaking on because that kind of gives it a little bit of a little bit of a mystery to the map. I mean, you can go and unlock the cloaking points if you want, but if you're testing it out for the first time, I like to I like to leave the cloaking areas cloaked so I have no idea where I'm going. It just kind of makes the game a whole lot more suspenseful. And I mean, it just climbs. I mean, it stayed in until I hit that tree. It stayed in third gear and it was just powering right up the side of this um, side of this hill in auto mode. Generally, not many things are going to do it in auto mode. They'll generally change down to second or down to first, and they'll kind of go all over the place in the RPM range. Not so here. I wonder if I have enough momentum to kick it up to high. Probably not. I'll probably just leave it in auto, because the thing is, if I put it in low, it's pretty much just the same as first gear in auto mode, and it knows when to be there. So you really, you rarely have to change gears. The only time you have to change gears in this thing is when you want to put it in high to say, I don't know, charge a hill or something like that. But again, it knows. It's like it's 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 like it's got a brain that just exactly that just knows exactly what's going on. And again, like I said, it's it's so grippy that you're not worried about oh I might not have enough speed for this or I might not have this or I might not have that. You've got the speed. I mean, even and even if you don't have the speed, it can still climb. Somehow we're gonna need to get down from here, and I'm not sure yet how that's gonna be done. Because I don't want to kill it just yet, but... Wow. That's actually one hell of a view. That's pretty epic. I've never actually been up to this side of the volcano before. That is awesome. You know what? That'd probably look even better if I was facing the, uh, the Land Rover the other way. I'm like, picture opportunity. I generally don't do that in spin tires, but... If I'm doing it in... You guys know, I'll do that all the time in Forza, or even uh, even GTA I'll do that. But I haven't really done that so far in Spin Tires because there's really no photo mode per se. But, I mean, when you've got a view like this, you can at least capture a video still because that looks incredible. I'm trying to get the background properly. That, yeah, that looks pretty awesome to me anyway. But, um, you know what? We're going to figure a way to get down the hill before we end this video off. That's going to be the last thing we do is barrel this thing down the hill hopefully not barrel roll but barrel as in barreling down as in having speed put it in high and let's go now oh, it's working so far <laughs> it actually is working so far let me put it back in auto so we can get more speed and it'll rarely like like you saw there it'll ever so uh, rarely go into fifth gear once it gets up to fifth though it's actually faster in fifth than it is in high so there's, again, there's almost no reason to change gears in this thing. A lot of vehicles and spin tires, you have to be changing gear all the time, figuring out what you want to do. Not so with this. It's an awesome build, awesome uh, Land Rover. Love the livery, love the design, love the ex actual execution of it. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, then don't forget to leave me a like. Tell me in the comment section down below what you guys thought of it. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later. And actually, don't forget to check this thing out as well. I'll make sure to have a link in the description below uh, once the mod is revealed. So, again, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later.